Hey, what's up, YouTube? Before I get into the video at all, somebody asked me a question. Uh, Tuner view with uh, Pandora through Bluetooth. Sure, it's possible, but um, let's just check it out. We are connecting. Okay, so it's live right now. Okay, we'll go out of it. Get Pandora going, choose Bluetooth. Okay. So I can tune her view. There you go. So yes. However, you cannot put ways <laughs> up there while you do it and I like ways I always have it going so there's the answer to one thing also um, hopefully I was clear enough in that last video I wasn't comparing necessarily 1.2 verse 2 like uh, how the tuner view app doesn't have knock count and knock cycle yet 1.2 still monitors it it'll be in that data log Shh. you just can't see it on the display all right we'll get to the main point in a second I gotta start driving so that one will sleep See you in a minute. Boy, it's a good thing I got these shades on. Wouldn't want to get blinded by all this rain up here. Um, anyways, the point of this video is map scale tuning. And I'm going to break it up in two parts. This first one is going to be more talking than doing. Um, it's just going to tell you kind of the concept I use and uh, how to get the data and uh, a little bit of info about the sensor, I guess. And side note, it's kind of weird that... Um, the base model Civics use an analog sensor, so it's on a voltage scale. The SI has a digital sensor that reads in a, a hertz, so it's a frequency scale. But then for the Civic Type R, they went back to an analog sensor so that people like K-Tuners tuning the Civic Type R now, I think they're already maxing out the stock sensor with nothing but tuning. They might have some bolt-ons, I don't really remember, but stock turbo anyways, and they're maxing out the um, mass airflow sensor so that already kind of sucks they're gonna have to have a PRL race version for the type R um, anyways so on that same note tuning the SI with this technique should work but instead of looking at voltages you're gonna be looking at uh, readings in Hertz frequency so um, basically the sensor is a hot wire style in this car um, now, a little filament of wire or whatever, uh, if the ECU knows the resistance of that and it keeps the, and it keeps the current constant, then, uh, sorry, if it keeps the current <laughs> constant, then, um, to do so, the voltage increases because of the resistance so um, as more air comes through it it cools off that wire and requires more voltage to keep the uh, wire heated uh, that's how I believe it works um, I could have a current constant voltage thing reverse or something but basically it's the air cooling off that filament of wire how the ECU knows what's going on so when I upgraded my housing size, that air has less of an effect on it because it just travels slower now for the same, uh, the same mass of air can travel slower in a bigger uh, tube. So um, I had to change the scale a lot. Now I initially went, um, am I doing this right? Yes. I initially, I was talking about driving, not uh, my mind is so involved in thinking about the stupid sensor that I was sidetracked thinking I missed my exit. Um, now, so the way that the trims work is air coming in, uh, the mass airflow sensor gives a reading to the ECU. The ECU says, hey, for that amount of air, we're going to put this much fuel. It does its thing, and then in the exhaust, the O2 sensor sees that well, wait a minute, that was not enough fuel. 
add more and or not add, that was too much take away and it applies a trim and that trim is telling you you're wrong on your scale so um, basically I take logs look at the uh, short-term trims and make changes based off that so first step in preparing for the tuning go into uh, the main parameters and then uh, closed loop settings I think is the tab you click on or not tab but the drop down but you um, press the plus sign whatever it drops everything down press closed loop settings I believe and on long term trims minimum and maximum I put point one um, some software zero will disable it it doesn't say that so um, I put point one just to not confuse it having a zero being a I don't know just could Certain times zeros just don't work in code, and I don't know if, oh, god damn it, there's traffic and now it's gonna be metered. That sucks. Um, anyways, I hate traffic. Uh, so, apply point one max long term trims because you don't want to have long term trims because all it is is more crap you gotta deal with reading when you're coming to check your information. So, flash that so you do not learn any long term trims. Second is, uh, hook your laptop up and set it in your seat and then get in the parking lot and drive as slow and smooth as you can and watch the voltage on my car um, basically I can get as low as about 1.25 1.3 before basically I might as well just push the clutch in and idle so I know pulling a log I'm never going to be able to uh, tune the scale below 1.3 while I'm driving. So make a mark of 1.3 um, because I'll show that in a second why I do it. And right now I'll just say there's probably better ways, different ways. I don't mean there should be only one way to skin this cat, I guess, uh, as, far, as far as the tuning part of it goes. But maybe the reading your data, there's more than one way. Um, and then uh, after that, um, I'll put the link in this video. I mean, and then the next video I'll show you how to use it. I made a spreadsheet in uh, Google Sheets that's got the whole uh, voltage scale in column one. Then it's got all the readings in grams per second. The second row, second column. I mean, the third column is empty. The fourth column, as it sits, mimics. Uh, column two. Now, if you apply anything to column three, like the change you want to make, it does the math for you and spits out a new value in uh, column four. That's the correct one. So if you put five in three, whatever row that's at, it'll take that grams per second, add 5%, give you a new value. If you put negative five, it'll take away 5%, give you a new value. Much easier than having to do the math on a calculator for every change you want, writing it down, and then uh, typing it in this way. You just see, I want to change five, you put in five, use the new thing, click it, control C, double click, control V, it's in there. Um, my scale won't work for you, obviously, because my housing is way bigger than yours. The one I'm gonna link to, I'll remake it with uh, the stock scale, so you'll have a better place to start from. If you've done some uh, changing already, you might have to change column two to match your scale. But, um, or one if you've changed any voltages. But, um, basically, uh, I'm not going to do too much in this video. I'm really making it in two parts to make it easier for me to get it done and ensure I'll actually get it out because now when I go to do the next time, I don't have to worry about any of this talking or editing this stuff right here. I can just get straight to the tuning part and pulling the data. The next video is where I'll show you how I get what I get, how I read it, and how I make the changes. Um, so, I guess that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Um, and I swear, it's the hardest thing in the world to give some away, apparently. Uh, I guess everybody from way back before I quit YouTube for a month or so uh, stopped watching me because.